Alrighty. Hello, my name is Alexander Selby, and welcome back to another installment of the RNA Seq tutorial guidelines for Dr. Pedro Mira's Biology 792 class. This is spring 2019 at the University of Nevada, Reno. So, last time we started here, or I guess right here, and I mentioned that we can use IGV tools to generate primers. That is not what this um, video is going to be about. This is going to be installment 3.1 because we're going to use IGV tools to generate TDF files using IGV tools to view in IGV. So TDF files are essentially tiled files. Let's look at what they, they say here. So a tiled data file is a binary file that contains data that has been pre-processed for faster display in IGV. So this is the IGV website. I clicked on IGV tools. So here are some of the functions that we can use. Today we are going to use the count function. And I'm going to click on running IGV tools from the command line. Okay, so this is going to give us essentially our manuals page. You can go, you can just type man IGV into the command line and all this information should pop up in your um, terminal. But I thought that this would be nice to give you guys a web link that you can just type in, takes you right to the page. So today we're going to be using the count function. So count can be used to create um, different files. Today we're going to be um, creating TDF files. So you can create TDF or WIG format files by using .tdf or .wig. Today we're going to use .tdf. So over here is our IGV tools command. So we're going to use IGV tools option count. And then first dash Z is the max zoom. We're just going to set it to 5. Dash W is the window size. We're going to set it to 25. Dash E is the extended, fa extended factor. So the read or feature is extended by the specified distance in base pairs prior to counting. The reason why we're using this is because this option is useful for ChIP-seq and RNA-seq applications. So where I got this command or this basic, you know, generic command right here was from the example. I thought they use it, why shouldn't I? So that's where I got that from. And we're just going to use that simple command. And here is once again we're working with ERR188044 as for all our other comparisons. Um, this is your input file. We're going to use our BAM files. Here's our output file in .tdf format and here is our here is my path to the hg38.genome so you must load the genome so that they can take the BAM file and compress it into a .tdf file and I'll show you how much smaller these files are after we run our handy dandy script so I created another bash script which I'll link in the description below just user bin bash samples, same as the other ones. For sample in dollar sign samples do this command right here. So everywhere that you see a sample, just replace with dollar sign braces sample. So then we did that here. And we'll just go ahead and run this bash script for you guys. So I'm in my directory where I have this bash script. I'm just going to type bash igv tools underscore tdf dot sh and it's going to start running so here we go info computing coverage file tells us what's going on here it's going to load the genome and it's going to process that on chromosome x so I under this is going to take a minute um, it doesn't have a thread option so here, I'll take you down to my H top here. 
we can see that it's kind of distributed amongst the threads and does pretty good distribu even distribution between the threads. You might see one that goes up to 100, but most of them are sitting at 10 to 20 percent. Um, so while this is running, we'll watch this too. Oh, look at that. First one, done. Moving on to the second one. So while we're sitting here watching this, I wanted to let you know why we're doing this. So .tdf files are much smaller. They compact that BAM file into a much smaller file, and like our description on IGV allowed us to visualize. Pre-process, these files are pre-processed for faster display in IGV. So instead of having to load a BAM in an index BAM file, you can just generate a, a TDF file and it'll load super quick um, into IGV. And we'll be doing that as well once we are done running these. So, all right, we got one done, we got two done. One done, two done. Working on number three. This is 18, one, 18, 8, 2, 3, 4. So we're right here, 18, 8, 2, 3, 4. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 more to go. So we're just going to let this run. We're going to hang out. This is pretty cool. Um, I thought I'd make a little update to this because, like I mentioned last time, I just was like, oh yeah, install IGV tools. You can make cool primers from it in the future, I guess, um, without really any explanation. So we're just going to do that. I double hashed it right here to denote that it's a addition that was not in the original one that I posted for part three, so I'm naming this part 3.1. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool thing to do. So you can create your TDF files if you don't want big BAM files floating around. Uh, I understand that this is only one chromosome, so most of your RNA-seq experiments are going to be much larger files than just, you know, less than a couple gigabytes. So these files, as we'll see, our BAM files are about seven, um, 700 megabytes, which is pretty sizable still, but our TDF files will come out to be two, maybe three megabytes. So it's a considerable difference, especially if you're trying to save some storage room. And if you've already gone through the process, we've installed, um, we've done the string tie and the GFF compare, we've installed um, ball gown. So I'll be making an upcoming video um, transitioning to R for differential expression analysis using ball gown. But right now we're just going to load these TDF files into IGV and we'll show you what they look like. Show you what the alignments look like and how you can manipulate them to make all of them nice and pretty and you can see all of the different files on IGV without creating all these indexed BAM files and whatnot. So where are we now? Okay, we're at ERR eighteen eight three eight three. Alright, we got one, two, three, four more to go after this. So I mean it's been running for a couple minutes now. It's going considerably quickly. And like I said, there's no option to increase the threads that you may use to overwork your computer if you want to get it done faster. But like I said, it's not, it's running considerably fast. We're on 401. And like I said, we'll be opening up IGV from the command line. And we'll be opening all of these files at the same time. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple, really. You just hold control and click, 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 click. On all the files that you want to load, hit load, boom. There you are. You got all your files loaded and you can see all the alignments. Alright, 428, here we go. Two more after this. 
So yeah, it gives you all of the uh, pretty much. It's, oh, info, computing coverage. Here's the file. There's our max zoom, window size. Um, so our window function is set to mean. So if we come back to our IGV tools, we have a window functions command dash f or dash dash window functions. So a common delimited list specifying window functions to use when re reducing the data to pre-computed tiles. So the standard, I guess you could say, is mean. The preset is mean, but you can set it to min, max, median. P2 equals the percentile. The P values re represent percentile. So P2 is the second percentile, 10th percentile, 90th percentile, and 90th percentile, respectively. Um, you can also use strands, bases, if you want to count the occurrence of each base, um, querying a string or a specific region. So if you knew where your specific region that you wanted to uh, look at was, and you had the location that you would enter into IGV, so this is a typical IGV um, location for a certain set of bases, so chromosome 1, base 100 through 1000. You can look at that. So the minimum map quality du includes duplicates um, or pairs. So, like I said, here's the example that was given. That's where I got my Z, W, and E values. Our alignments right here sample chromosome X top BAM. Here's our TDF output files. I tried just typing HG18, but I wasn't in the folder, so I gave the full path to the HG38.genome file. Alright, let's check. Let's see what's going on here. And we're done. Alright, so show you that they're all here. Here's our first TDF file, 188044. Here's our last TDF file, 204916. So to show you the difference in the size, we're going to go LL. We're going to use the dash H option, which means human readable. And we'll just check some of these out. So here's our 204916 file. It's at 2 megabytes. The SAM file, however, was at 611 megabytes, and our BAM file was at around 127 megabytes. So I misspoke earlier, the SAM files are the large ones, and this BAM file is a little bit smaller. But still, 127 megabytes compared to 2 megabytes. So if you're really looking to save space and you've done everything that you wanted to with your BAM file, but you still want to view your alignments, you got your TDF file, you can load it up into IGV. All right, let's open up IGV. Boom shakalaka. Here we are. OK, HG38, I'm going to scroll down, click on chromosome X. So files, load from files. Here we are, and we're going to search through, and we're going to click TDF. We're going to hold Control, click TDF. Hold Control, click TDF. Hold Control, click TDF. Hold Control, click TDF. Uh, seems we have lost our TDFs. TDF. TDF, 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 it's probably getting annoying, huh? TDF, <laughs> here we go, TDF, 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 here we go, alright, TDF, TDF, we're getting there. 
I wish there was an option. Maybe I'm just not as adept at this. Okay, we've reached the final TDF. We're going to click open. And boom. There you go. There you have it. Here's our 18044, 188044, 18804418824518254188278273337383303401 428, 454, and 204916. So there they are all loaded side by side at the snap of a finger or the click of a button, if you will. Alright, so let's check out the Zist gene. So we're going to zoom in on the Zist locus and we can see. Here we go. We're going to click auto scale. I'm going to click auto scale on that one too. I'm going to just auto scale all of these to make them look pretty. And as you can see, as we auto scale some of these, they come into view, they shrink so that you can view them better. And there we have it, completely auto-scaled, and we're zoomed in on the cyst gene, so chromosome X, 73,818,651-73,854,753. So these are our, this is the first nucleotide, and that is the last nucleotide. So, there you have it, folks. Here is our gene down below with our different introns, these um, thin lines, and our exons, these big, so this is like the um, five prime, three prime ends with our little exons in the middle. And we can see how all of these aligned and where they are. We can actually expand this a little bit too. So we'll view the squished mode. So we have two what looks like two separate um, isoforms right here. We have this one with this big long exon. We have this one with these little mini exons and these introns in between. So, with that, I'll leave you guys with that. And that's how you create TDF files and load them into IGV to look at them and view your alignments. We did the Zist gene because it happened to be something that we were looking at. So, you can enter in any, literally anything that you want in here. We were working with the P, Q, R, Y, 10 gene last time. Here you go. Um, they're all auto-scaled and you can see all those. Here are all of our isoforms. And I guess these are the um, five prime, or yeah, five prime, three prime ends you know, with our introns in between. We looked at, and I can show you guys, I made primers using IGV tools for the first and third ones to differentiate them in a qPCR type analysis. So that will be the subject of maybe part 3.2. But for now, I'll leave you guys with that. We'll go back to the exist gene. Ta-da! As we can see, there's a lot of variation in these different samples. But that's how you load the TDF into IGV. That's how you create your TDF and load them into IGV. Once again, my name is Alexander Selby, and this has been another installment of the RNA-Seq tutorial guidelines for Dr. Pedro Miro's Biology 792 class spring of 2019 at the University of Nevada, Reno. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, just leave them in the comment box below, or leave me a comment. I will link the script that I used today for this in the description box. And happy bioinformatics journeys to you all.